And welcome back to Top Dogs. This week, we're exploring the challenges of the furry fandom. From misconceptions to ethical implications, we're diving deep into the issues that furries face. So join us as we talk about the community, discuss practical solutions, and explore a world that is often misunderstood. It's time to get to the root of the furry fandom here on Top Dogs. My name is Fiction Boy. I'm Sue Markadad. I'm Whiplash Wolf. And I am Sakada. Our special guest today. Again. <laughs> Again, yes. Again. <laughs> Last time I was a cow, but now I am more myself this time. Yes. Of course. You have changed from cow to mama. So I can discuss one thing with you. Everybody goes through different issues and challenges within the furry fandom. And each experience and perceptions are different. All right. So what are like the most common challenges that I would say from your own opinions that furry face within the community? Dream, how about we start with you? I think one of the first thing we struggle with the most is being accepted by people outside the furry fandom, but you're wondering what's our struggle inside the furry fandom, right? You can you can do it both ways if you want to. It doesn't really have to be well, outside one way. Is easy. <laughs> outside yeah, is easy, so but yeah. within can be a, a little bit more of a challenging topic. I think I mean, within what is difficult is a lot of people think that we're all friends and we all get along and we're all like, oh, we see our, each other for the first time and we automatically friends. And the reality is it's not. Um, mm -hmm. People tend to think friendships and relationship are stronger than they what they actually are. And as soon as something happened, well, these relationship break and people end up being hurt and stuff like that because they were thinking that they were friends when the truth of the matter is actually they were just acquaintances. I think this is the thing I hear about the most. So that would be I would my say social one. in terms of social infrastructure and how we communicate, it's still a thing. Um, you know, not every because there's a there's a huge misconception with a, a lot of furries. I think popular furries are in this huge ass network, like they are working all together. Even though that is not the case at all. Yeah. I don't. Uh, we are. They're just as selective about their friends, just like how me Whiplash stream are very selective about our own friends too. None. And sometimes, and the reality is, some of our friends are not in popular furries at all. Yeah, no, very true. I don't actually what? discriminate. I don't care what's mm -hmm. your background. You could be popular or not popular at all. If I have a good time with you, you uh, we get along well, you respect me and I respect you, then it's like our really, our friendship is great. So I'm not going to complain about that. See, I'm on the me, same boat as, as that. As long as you're not a cat, <laughs> I'm fine with you. <laughs> The instance you be the instance you start acting like complete like bag of people just because either you are popular and you think you should be treated differently from other people or you think just your life in general is better than other people's or there's a few other things I could describe but if you try to be a dick just for like no reason then out of my life please you're not worth it you're not worth my time you're not worth to be fair like me wasting my breath on you I'm not trying to be a dick, but that's just the way I see it as. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, you, we're not meant. To, we're not meant to get all along. It's it's literally impossible for that to happen. Just accept the fact that you don't get well together, and that's fine. And that's it. Just move on. There's a there's a thousand. There's millions of fish in the sea. You'll find somebody else to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, there's, I want to hear what's there are plenty of about it. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, you know, in a lot of these regards, um, the furry fandom is no different than like any other fandom out there where like, you know, you, you have groups of friends, you have clicks, you have, you know, the pop.
popular kids. You've got, you know, the the introverts. You've got the people who don't get along with anybody. You've got the people who want to be everybody's friends. I mean, it, it's really no different in the fandom. But one of the things that I have found in the fandom is just like, you know, people are, you know, they're more accepting. You're still going to run into those groups who are like, if you're not part of their group, like, they don't want anything to do with you. I mean, click mentality. And... Click. Yeah, exactly. See, I will say and, my yeah, actual like, like. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. Oh, it's just like you know you were saying that like you know not everybody's going to get along with each other, and that's just that, that's just how it is, you know. Mm hmm. Okay, I was gonna say just like how my IRL friends are and how I click with you guys. Click, click. I just don't deal with the problematic ones. And there are, as I'm sure all of us know, there are plenty of problematic ones <laughs> that do exist out there. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I've seen my fair share of it, so I try to stick away from the drama, keep close with the people who actually you like chilling with, who I just like talking with, and our discussions can be about other things just besides furry stuff, because it's not always about furry things, it's just about getting, no. getting alone together with other things as well, like, you know, how I'm a car enthusiast, most of my friends IRL are car enthusiasts, now some of them aren't, but we've clicked a different way, like, we're just good friends in general. You'll find your group of people, like, it may take some time, or it'll be just like how it happened to me. Someone talked to me, I talked to them, and it just kind of flourished that way. And it was just because of one random thing. It's better to think... let things happen organically as well. Uh, don't try yeah. to like force yourself into a group that you don't even know yourself. And just exactly. ride the wave, so to speak. And also, there's a another problem that within our community that is kind of an internal problem of... Uh, there is furries out there that I see that are trying to be everybody's friend. And I'm going to tell you this right now. That is a very unhe unhealthy lifestyle to live. And there's also mm -hmm. another thing that I wanted to point out. Which is the ones that feel like they need to apologize for them being themselves. But as we all know, mm -hmm. I don't believe that you should apologize for being yourself. Because then you're just, an, you're just easy to manipulate. I'm not going to exactly. apologize for something I believe in because if you do, if you do apologize for it, then your word means nothing. Exactly. Just be yourself. Stay true. Never let Actually, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take. I'm not going to take a stranger's advice. I'm telling me who I should be. Yeah, because you don't know who I they can, are. I, Their mentality should be. They could be backwards thinking versus you. Like, you will never... Here's my saying, you will never please everyone, so don't really listen to those. Please yourself. Not in that regards, but make yourself happy. <laughs> don't make others happy. Because this is going to be... Depressing. You're going to, like... Yeah, you're going to, like, run yourself dry of, like, any sort of energy. It's over, like, exertion of yourself, and it's just going to tower you out. And it's going to might do other things that I won't discuss, but make yourself happy. Don't worry, don't worry about other people's, like, because we, we know how, like, we know how many people in the furry fandom have a voice about things that they think should be right, even though you're doing it yourself to make yourself happy. Just don't listen to them. There is a gray line, or actually, in the spectrum, there is a gray line what most people might think is good or right. Or good, no, not good, right, good and wrong. But everybody's opinions are a little bit different. That's why it's such a gray area. Because everybody's different mm -hmm. and unique in their own ways. Not everybody's opinions are going to be the same. Just like mm -hmm. I don't expect everybody to agree with my own opinions about certain things either. Hence, you know, yeah. why I don't I don't really put my... And this is just my opinion. I'm not really the type to uh, explain like topics or discussions about very sensitive information. I don't really talk about social media. I'm more comfortable with talking about it with somebody I trust that can actually have a discussion with me without being, you know, triggered by it. Because I would prefer you would talk to me as an adult and just instead of attacking me. Because that's why I don't really necessarily talk about things online that are very sensitive subjects. Because I don't expect a lot of people to come up to me maturely and talk to me without attacking me. So, hot take. 
to be fair, usually whenever I see someone post like sensitive information online, to me, unless it's something like completely like out of nowhere that needs to be said, like something like we've seen some people in the fandom do. It's mainly for attention, I feel like. Like, that's a hot take on me. Some things should be said, but those are like where it's information that people need to know about so they can stay away from that person. Like, the group of people that live in Colorado, not gonna shout them out. No one needs to even interact with them because they're garbage people. I'm just gonna say that. Oh my god. <laughs> it's such okay. a blend judgment. <laughs> It's, okay, well, no, you I mean will, the furry Nazis, then. I will, I will the argue that. I will they live argue. in Colorado. Yeah, Just yeah, I that, understand huh? that. I understand that. <laughs> I didn't want to but say what that. what I am saying <laughs> is this. What I am saying this. Well, what I will say is this. I don't like when people come up to me and tell me I should not be friends with them because they did this, this, and this. Make Let me make that my own not... judgment. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Exactly. Go, keep going. Yeah. yeah. I don't want someone to tell me, hey, you cannot be friends with this person because you did not like them because of what they did to you. Yeah, sure, they might have f***ed up. But everybody does. It's part of human nature. That's exactly. what I mean. like. Well, you can't, like, it's not because you have an argument and you have a fight with this person that this other person is going to have the same issue. Every situation between two uh, two persons is always a personal thing, and it doesn't mean that it's gonna happen to everybody else. So when people act like this, I really don't like it. If you ask me my opinion about this person, I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to be object uh, objective. I'm gonna say, okay, I had this argument with this person. I'm not backstabbing or I'm not trash talking. I'm just telling the situation what happened to me you draw your own conclusion you might has what well, you might not have this is these issues that i have and if it doesn't happen good for you but i'm never going to tell someone to not be friend with somebody else because that's unacceptable and if everybody start doing it nobody are going to be friends with each other anymore you're no because better no than the person it's you're ridiculous it, you're, you could no be the nicest me. person you could be the nicest person out there, and there's still someone that is going to call you out and call you an asshole for whatever stupid reason. So stay true to yourself, but also be thoughtful of like what you do. Be respectful. Don't be mean. Try to be a nice person as much as possible, but stay true to yourself. Because people will blame you to having a chameleon personality as well, which could be another thing. There's That's also pretty much what I try doing. Well, you see... Like, this is another thing that, like, I was going to talk about here was, like, you know, the thing that I've noticed about the fandom and one thing that, you know, is very well known in the fandom is that furries love drama. They will create well, we it do. if they don't have COVID something made to base it on. I, I, do you know I think why it's been going happens. on since before COVID. Do you know why there's I mean, a lot of drama in the furry fandom? Well, I mean, there's a number of different reasons why it happens, and that's attention. one of them, whether it be needing attention <laughs> or, you know, I'm somebody just like, you know, speaking out their mind when they probably shouldn't. And I I'm kind of under the impression... <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of under I the impression... I do want to answer this, though. I'm kind of under the okay, impression, okay, no matter what, what community you're in, it seems no matter what ever kind of community you're in, they're always going to be in a drama and they're and what you said i think it's true for every community doesn't matter just furries but furries are the ones that we know we don't know about the other ones of course but i would assume it's the same way that there's other communities not so different from us Go okay, stream. i'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. <laughs> so i'm from two other different communities i'm from the airsoft community and i'm from the cosplay community and i gotta say the furry one is the worst here's why there's two types of furries in this community, I've noticed personally. This is all my own opinion, okay? If you're offended by this, then this is your problem. But there's furries that the furry lifestyle is their way of living, and there's other people where furries is a hobby. To me, furries is a hobby. I have multiple passions. I do airsoft, I do tinkering, I do, I'm a cocksmith as well. I do a bunch of things. And what I've noticed is a lot of furries that it's their lifestyle, they don't have anything else. They don't have any other hobbies. They only do this. And when there's no conventions, they get bored at home. So to a lot of them unconsciously, what they do is they start drama because it's entertaining. And that's something I've noticed is the people that starts the drama are people that are like, hey, what do you do outside furries? And they don't know what to answer. 
I've seen this happen multiple times. It's not always the case, but this is my personal observation. I would say True. that another thing that I would say is that there is one-sided personalities within the furry fandom, and actually, in, in my opinion, I don't really get along with people that are one-sided like that, because I like to have a variety of who you are. But it, but there is some people What's that the... are one-sided, yeah, which means one-sided. all the whole personality is just furry. Nothing else. Oh, so what? Oh, what yeah. Okay. So that's exactly what I just said. That all yeah, their fur. life revolves around mm-hmm. furries, which is not necessarily must... a bad thing. But try to add a bit of diversity. You'll see. You'll you'll feel a lot better. True, because I'm in the car community, and to be fair, exactly. the car community has its drama. But usually, when it comes up, it's over something stupid. And when it happens, that person who started usually gets smashed down faster than anything else can happen. But in the <laughs> furry community, when Jabba comes up, the original person who started it usually doesn't get taken down quickly. It just starts getting spread through the fandom like it's a virus, and shit's just gone way too far when that happens. But the stream is right. There are people who are in the fandom who just think that furry is lifestyle. It should be the way it's the way of life to be a furry like no there are other things to do like you can't go throughout your entire life wanting to be a dog or or a full anthropomorphic dog you have to go to a job you have to have your friends you have to you know go to college especially get yourself a degree or do something that's blue collar that's you know good You, you have to like live your life like a normal person to say at least but have something as a furry as a hobby like being a furry is fun it's amazing you get to meet nice Wonderful people like stream, fiction, Sakura. Yeah. But you have to do other things too besides think furry 24-7. Like that's just not the case. It's not healthy. It really isn't healthy. Some people are just going to be that way regardless. And there, I think there is... You know, can't after that talking, after discussing, after discussing this with Colton before that we even had this talk before... Um, there is one-sided personalities that do exist, and that's really who they are. And, uh... I know. As long as they're I'm... okay with it, then I don't really have... It. I don't necessarily is... can say nothing bad about it, because, um, that's who they are, and if I don't necessarily like those kinds of people, I just tend to avoid them. There's nothing wrong against them, I just don't necessarily get along with someone that doesn't have variety in their life. Look, I won't judge you for what oh, you like want to do. Other... Be yourself. But I remember one post from like years ago before, it was like 2017, 2018. Someone posted, I'm not sure what it was on anymore, what social media was. I think it was some, in a subreddit somewhere. But someone said they wanted to glue their fursuit to their body so they can actually become who they want to be. That's not what you do. <laughs> Don't do that. That is highly dangerous. It's super highly dangerous. And then people wonder why some people outside the furry community were cringe. It's because you see those really specific, like, situations that pop mm-hmm. up on the internet. Because naturally, the mind focuses very easily on negative stuff. So, yeah. Oh, that absolutely. one person uh, I'm does something bad and it that. puts an etiquette on the whole furry fandom. Or label. Exactly. Oh, I can spend an hour etiquette. talking etiquette about is actually that. In French. <laughs> like how, to be fair, people think that people who like anime are we. We, as we know, I'm not gonna say I'm, a word, uh, but I'm, I don't know. We know how people think it. of anime. Oh yeah. well, um, lollies. I don't know. I don't know. You can lollies. You can censor that out if you want to. <laughs> but they what's think a, anyone that? who likes anime, <laughs> children. Oh, she's kidding me. It's not oh, children. I don't have that, I don't it is. Have that it is. Wait, wait. Honestly. It is characters that look like children, but they're like of age or like thousands of year olds. Like they're, they're of oh. age, but they look like I don't, kids. Okay, that I don't want to hear it anymore. I, I don't perceive <laughs> yeah. that feeling from them, honestly. I, I, really I hate that I what... asked that question. But the thing is, not everyone in the anime fandom is like that, of course, but that's how people also represent us. They think that we just want to be, or they think we're trying to be zoophiles, which we're not. We're just, we just like animals. I I love my dog right here. He's a good boy, aren't you? I kind of wanted to ask a question for Sakura and a very specific thing. So we are, uh, how is, um... What about the uh, transgender community specifically? What is their in- internal struggles within the community of the furry fandom? Because like, oh, yeah. I'm curious about that. Um, when it comes to like 
I don't know, transgender folks in the furry community. Like, I, I can't... Like, I... <sighs> Oh my goodness, where do I even begin with something like this? Because, like, it, it, it falls along, it would fall along the same lines of, um, like, just dealing with being transgender in general. Because you still have to deal with, you know, because there are still a lot of bigoted people. Like, you, there are in the fandom. Like, you know, oh, if you're, you know, you're born cis male, you're male. Whatever's in your pants is what you are. Like, that, there, there's no exclusion of that in the furry fandom. And, you know, being accepted for who you are can be really difficult. Because me, obviously, you know, I'm transgender, you know, male to female. And, you know, I've actually had a lot of situations where, like... Sorry. Either becoming friends with somebody or, you know, even, like, the concept of pursuing somebody has been rather difficult because of... um just well quite simply what's inside my pants you know people the, for the most part the ver furry fandom is very open very accepting but you know it is those people who are just kind of like no what you were born is what you are and you you know quote unquote pretending to be something else is you know vile and disgusting and you know you'll never be accepted for who you are and you know, it, it, it's really no different than the real world than it is in the furry fandom. It's yeah, because I know I've, I've, I mm. know somebody that is transphobic. I don't want to put his name because it's not important. He's not even in the fandom anymore. At least he's working on that part. But I think a lot of people that are transphobic, I think it's because they don't fully understand what's ha happening. And since they don't understand, it's frustrating. And they're and this is why I think they're where where the hate comes from is that misunderstanding of what's of what's going on. Um, so I think a lot of education would be required to reduce the amount of transphobia I see over the internet. In conclusion, a lot of it people too. fear what they don't understand. A lot that is very true as well. Or they could also be <laughs> and don't like people being happy for who they want to be. This is what I get. Well, from some them people more. envy other people's happiness and they feel the right to bring you down so that they bring you below their level so that they feel good about themselves i know you know it's funny because i know somebody that used to stir a lot of drama and he was trying to do stuff against me once and it's really funny because i was this 21 22 year old guy I had my condo, I had my business, and this guy was like 30, 32, and he still lived in his mom's basement, and he was trying to bring me down below his level so he would feel himself better. So r yeah. be really careful with people that start drama. Look at their background. Look where they're coming from, what they do for in their everyday life, and it's going to be really easy to distinguish the bullshit and see what they're trying to do, and you will develop this shield against these types of attacks and you it's actually going to make you laugh at the end it just makes it's, me laugh when i receive it's more like it's more of an internal struggle with some of these people it's something that yeah. they wanted to try to do themselves but they just don't know necessarily how to do it and that's okay you don't necessarily need to know how to do it you still have to at least put yourself out there to really uh, figure it out but I feel bad for these people nonetheless. Even though they stir drama, I kind of feel bad because I know where it starts from. What's the origin of starting this drama? It's because they're not happy themselves and they're trying to bring people down so they can feel better about themselves. And I'm sorry for them, actually. And to I'm be not, fair, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in <laughs> on that one. Right. I don't care. <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of, you know, when it comes to like, you know, as Stream was saying, you know, look for where a person came from. Like a lot of the people that I've run into that, you know, have that arrogant, bigot, you know, mentality comes from either one or two different sources. Either number one, their upbringing, you know, look at, you know, what kind of family they came from. Are their parents homophobic? Were they raised to believe that, you know, anybody in the LGBTQ community is, you know, like a sin to God, as it were. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, they take that, they see that, they've been raised on that. And so they are meant to believe that, you know, people like, you know, myself 
just flat out shouldn't exist. Or, you know, the other thing is, is just, well, self arrogance, you know, they just, they see something that's different than they are. And like you guys said, they don't understand it. But the thing that I've always, you know, tried to teach myself in life is that life is about choices. You know, you could come from a horrible, abusive background, but you could still be a better person at the end of the day. You could still end up being, you know, somebody who is looked up to, somebody who can be a good person. But these are the people who choose not to follow that path. These are the people who choose to continue to put people down despite how they were raised. And, you know... It, it, it's very sad to see it, but it's also very frustrating some, at the same time. Me too. <laughs> I have something to say about that, actually. So what you just said makes a lot of sense. Um, so my husband that was on the show on the Valentine's episode, he actually was uh, sexually abused by his morale teacher when he was at school. He was 14 years old. A lot of people, they consider themselves victims of, like, things that happened in their life. But my husband wrote a book. He decided to consult, get some help. And he doesn't consider himself a victim anymore. He considers himself a survivor. And that changes everything. Do you want to be a victim Hallelujah. for the rest of your life? Or do you want to go past that and become a survivor? Don't like you being the victim of a un 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 un. Don't let yourself be the victim of something that bad happened to you, and don't let that reflect on who you are today. Because See, that's, that's if you're letting that yourself, stop you, you can. if you're letting that stop you from being your full potential, then you're definitely not living up to it. So you definitely exactly. have to push yourself push yourself very hard to get yourself. I understand, and everybody in this room can understand that going through a horrible experience with anything that is very impactful on your mental state can be hard to like recover from but you, the future doesn't wait for you you're choosing to wait yeah because so push yourself i mean because I, I did i tell you fiction did i ever tell either of you i can't remember because i had something horrible happen to me when i was nine years old at a walmart which I never forgot it, but here's the thing is, I've moved past it, because I'm not going to let it affect me. It's something that should never happen to any child, but unfortunately it does. Mm -hmm. A lot, and it shouldn't, and those people are sick. But I don't let it affect me, because if it did, I wouldn't like going to Walmarts, because I'd have that mentality of, I ah, it's going to happen again, or it would be, you know, a group of certain people, because it was a group of certain people, because it was a group of people who actually did it to me. And I don't, like, think everyone of that certain culture is that way. It's just, unfortunately, I was doing stupid things, and I was trying to go to a Hot Wheels section in the Walmart, and I got caught off guard. And I don't let it like affect me. It's just something you gotta work through, get help for. Because especially if something like that happens, absolutely get help for it. Go to what do they call it? I can't remember what they are. A psychiatrist. Psychologist. Psychologist, psychiatrist. Is it psychologist? Yeah, yeah, psych yeah psychologist. psychologist. And it's not a sign of weakness going to a psychologist. You would be surprised the amount of thing you can work on yourself. Absolutely, because Even just getting a therapist is... is really helpful. I got a social worker and I figured out a bunch of things about myself I didn't even know. Although I'm really glad I went there. I didn't think I needed it, but I guess I did. <laughs> yeah. Go but ahead, Whiplash. Either way, definitely get yourself some help. There are good ways of getting help. I mean, I after that happened, I went to my parents, I found them, and I told them what happened. Honestly, I feel like if my dad could have found them, because I think afterwards they left. If my dad would have found them, he would have been put in jail because he had, like, murder written on his face when I told him what happened. Yeah, that was a fun night, to say at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you're, you're, um, let, you're not letting horrible events define you who you are as a person. You're, you're fighting through that. Oh yeah, no, I've been fighting through it. There's another yeah, thing it, that furries are very guilt of, guilty of as well, which is uh, comparison to other people's problems to theirs, which is not very fair because everybody's uh, perceptions are different. Uh, 
Man, this so, is for a example, rough episode. <laughs> for, yeah, it is a very rough episode. But what this I'm fine. saying is this, this is now a podcast. It's like yeah, podcast time. This is definitely podcast time. So, what I am saying is this: uh, uh, don't try to compare your issues to somebody else's. And they shouldn't either, necessarily, because each people's levels are different in terms of their stress. And what exactly. I mean Everyone by that... goes through their own problems. Kind of like... What's to say, um, mainstream, your levels of stress about relationships, like our partner's relationship, is probably way different levels than mine. And I can't yeah, just say, like... well, I we have a similar problem, which technically, no, we don't. He might handle it differently than I, how I would handle it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> Yes. Don't don't compare your stressful levels to somebody else's when you have no idea how bad bad it is to them or not as bad to them. Or what you they've know? gone through. Well, also, like, don't go like, out of your you... way. Sorry. Yeah. Might. Uh, well, like, you just know, don't. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> you go Sakura ahead. Go Sakura, first. Sorry. Sakura, no, Sakura, uh, go, Sakura, go, go. Sakura, Sakura, go first. We're gonna finish okay. this way. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> on the top, on that same, you know, token of you know comparing yourself to others, don't sit there and say, "Well, like you know what, fiction, I've got it worse than you because I'm single and you've got a relationship. I have it so much worse than you. You don't know what I'm going through." Like, don't say stuff like that because yeah. that can create a lot of problems for people. Like, you know, don't don't compare yourself to other people. Just be like, you know what, you have your problems, I have my problems, and you know what. You know, we get through them. We get through them on our individual basis, and we help each other through it. There is two sides of the same coin about just, like, if I was to say, to add on to it, there's two sides of the same coin. Uh, the difference is, is that they both they both have, they both both are having problems. No matter if you're single, that's an, a problem. Being in a relationship with somebody is also just another problem. Two sides of the same coin. They're just different problems. Exactly. That's why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my... I've had my fair share. It's just my choice. But being in a relationship is great. But it comes with its own issues and own problems, like you both. I am sure it, go it through has every its day. Pros and cons, and you can't, you cannot get both. You can make get a mix, yes, if you have a good enough communication going on in your relationship. And it depends what are the limits and the rules of your relationship. But most of the time, it's either one or the other. Most of the time, it, again, depends on your relationship and the communication. <laughs> Um, That's what's funny. Yeah, another... My big point on that was like, you know, oh my God. on that same thing of, you know, comparing your problems to somebody, don't make it, you know, don't escalate it to being like, well, I have it worse than you. You don't know. No, no, don't do that. That's just, it just puts oil on the fire and makes it worse and it makes people angry. What you can do is just like, okay, I'm sorry what you're going through. Is there anything I can do to help? And that's it. You just mm. cut it at that. And you don't even need to try to compare or understand. Just respect the fact they're struggling with something. Which leads me to something else. There's one thing I've noticed a lot in the furry community. is I believe, I think, that people confuse the word depression and feeling depressed. Depression mm. is when you're crying and you don't know about it, you always feel down. I mean, I've been diagnosed with the depression and I, I got through it. And so there's depression and feeling depressive is when you're bored out of your mind, you don't know what to do, you're not motivated by anything. That's just because like, you need to find other hobbies, which brings back what I said earlier, people that sees the furry as their lifestyle versus seeing it as a hobby. When you have multiple hobbies, it will get you, it will help you get through those depressive moments that happen. Everybody gets them. It doesn't necessarily mean you're, de you're depressive. It's two different things. Just be careful when you're using these words because I've seen this be these two words being used on wrong situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you guys think? Am I, I, I mean, off I, the chart I right think now? You're on the, you're, I like sense. your point. I, I, I like, like using depressed, like, whenever I feel, like, sad about something that's happened that's, you know, something that happened in your family or something that's someone close to you, you get that overwhelming feeling of depression because it's something, like, you don't know what to it do. It feels similar. It feels similar, but it's not the same. It's temporary. Okay. So, temporary depression. <laughs> Temporary, no, yes. being, depre being depressive is a temporary <laughs> depression. <laughs> I, exactly. I will agree with that. 
<laughs> also, will... we're, so what I was going to tell Sakura is like, I'm sure. God, what was it? It's like comparing someone. We're talking, just talking about comparing to each other. But it's like comparing someone who's straight or bisexual versus someone who is transgender trying to find someone. Oh, I, I believe that nobody should try to un- understand someone. Like, I'm not, not a transgender, of course, but I'm not going to pretend like I know their problems because I'm not them. That That's just mean, you know? Yeah, exactly. Because, like, they go, especially, like, I have my best friend, IRL, is transgender. And she goes through so much shit just because of what she wants, who she wants to be. Especially the company I work for. If they ever like found out, I'm some. It's like one of those like southern southern companies, say the least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for her, but I'm happy she's who she is. She's been taking hormone medication for I think two years now. And I'm glad she's going for who she wants to be. That's all that matters. I'm happy she's happy. Yeah, I'm happy for her too. But, but anyway, so I was gonna. Wait one second. I was gonna start up. Oh, okay. Okay, go Just ahead. Just for Arcadad, real quick. Just so for Arcadad, real quick. How you're talking about? God, what was it? God, I was gonna compare something. Oh, communication. I I wish communication in the furry venom was good as how they start drama. Oh my god, that is so true. Damn. Oh my god. It, it wow. Is, wow. That hits the nail right on true. the head. That hits yeah, it hard. People. Oh Jesus. my god. It's sad, but it's true. <laughs> They're really easy on saying their opinion. Like, like, Those guys are a piece of shit. When, it, when it's time to have like legit conversation, like, oh no, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. Hey, mm-hmm. screw you, man. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Honesty is the best policy. My thing is... Get your priorities honest- straight. Look, honesty is the best thing you could possibly do. Be, if it's either like truthful, hurtful, like hard, like if it's hurtful, truthful, it's better than lying to someone. Because you could still be friends and be a hurtful truther versus someone who's just lying to make someone happy, and then they find out later, and then it's just like took like a bomb going off. Yeah. Truth is better than lies. That one That's hits all really I'm gonna close say. To home. Uh, yeah. I've learned when I was, I learned from younger. I used to lie as a child, teenager, young adult. It was my main thing, and then I learned it. And I'm like, this is stupid. This has gotta got stop. And since then, mm-hmm. it's nothing but the truth. It's yeah. just well, works so much thing. better. The truth mm-hmm. always comes up. The, the the old the truth always comes up at some point. So just. It makes it worse. Just be honest. Yes, it might hurt a little bit at the beginning, but it's gonna end up better than when you lie and then people feel like they got lied to, their trust has been affected, and it makes them angry. It just makes things worse. Just be honest. And yeah. honestly, per- personally, I prefer people to be directly honest than trying to take all these paths to explain how I did something wrong. Just say, hey, you did this. I was offended by that. And you know what? Basically, don't sugarcoat like, it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. don't you just it, go for, go to the point. Don't go around in a circle and loops and doing these things to tell me something simple. Just tell me, hey, I didn't like when you said that. Okay. See, we, it's uh, just like we'll this. Instead of going it. through, instead of going through a corn maze, just get in the tractor and run the shit oh, over. Corn maze. But yeah. but I also will say <laughs> this. But even if you don't necessarily sugarcoat it, uh, sugarcoat it, um, milk it. There's a. <laughs> There's still if we still stick to our opinions, we're, they're not going to be sorry about it, and you have to be okay with that. If you're not, you don't necessarily have to be a part of their life either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's going to be your friend. Still- That's something you learn. Not everyone's your friend. You'll find your true friends. Like to be fair, me stream and fiction, we've gone on, gone along so well. Like I feel like we'll be friends for a long time for sure. No yeah. yeah. issues. It's fun being all with you guys. I always have a good time. Yeah, he's oh. a good one. He's a good bean. Yes. Yeah. Well, Colton is probably the most unbiased person you would ever meet. Exactly. <laughs> he's he's also to like be one that of the most happiest. <laughs> he's one of the happiest people, and he is someone who will hurt your feelings because he's like truth, 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 truth. He's like <laughs> the he's like the atomic bomb of truth. <laughs> he doesn't care. Well, if it hurts he has enough. the right balance of everything. That's the thing. He can be honest. He can he can receive criticism. He can give criticism in the right amount. Like he's really balanced on everything. He can give you like, criticism if you ask for it. Yeah. Oh yeah. He will. And honestly, criticism is good. Like criticism will help that. you. <laughs> like criticism. So the thing is, criticism is different from someone trying to tell your life. 
criticism is like what their perspective is on it and instead of someone telling you what to do that's just what they think you should do <laughs> right I'm, if yeah. i'm getting that wrong or I, th I think you're on yeah i think so very right, cool but I, I, didn't, I didn't want to say right. what I need to say. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah, it's go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. Just relax your himbo brain. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, bro. Hey, himbo yeah, brain I is funny. Himbo shirt. <laughs> but it's, all we just hey, need I'm to get you a t-shirt. Relax your himbo brain. Just get Look, a t-shirt like that. Look, I got uh, quick uh, math, though, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm good at anyway, I'll say that. Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to start off with the question of the week, and um, it's how can furries use their platforms to spread positivity and inclusivity? So, we already have somebody answer this question, and it was from Official Fox Music. Official Foxy Music. And I'm going to re going to answer his question for him so and i quote well my answer personally is you know everyone has what inspires them and causing people to be happy and motivated basically the furry community is full of people with creativity in their blood welcome all who feel like they are outcasts by continuing to inspire and to help shine a light to those who feel like they are outcasts if that makes sense end quote Thank you, by the way, Official Foxy Music, for giving us your answer. That was much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quick now, just a reminder, policy. guys, if you do want to answer some of our questions and you have an option to be on the podcast with your answer, just keep in mind on that. And we do post them in our forums, in our Discord server, which brings us to what we're going to talk about now. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to be notified with any videos, hit the bell. If you want to go check out e. everything else from our Discord server to our Telegram, or even personally about us, me, Whiplash, Viction, and Stream. <laughs> of course, Stream. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> me, Whiplash, to and fire. Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. Good job. That was a himbo brain and for me. You call us having a himbo brain. <laughs> Look at you, big boy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, I set myself up for that one. But yes, yeah, if you want to find all the information about stream, me, and Whiplash, go. A, there will be a link tree at the bottom of the description of the YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out our audio platforms as well from Spotify to Amazon Music. All of that is also in the link tree, so be sure to check that. Exactly. Or else, what is Whiplash going to do? Now, Keith. Where's the camera? Whiplash right? is going the camera. to... <laughs> yeah, no, 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 Whiplash no, no, no. is going to whip his tail back and right. forth. This is not a song. Can I whip this tail? If you want more back information forth, about me, stream, or Arcadad, check the link tree down below. <laughs> If you on? don't do, if you don't follow us on anything, I'm gonna bend this boy over. <laughs> what oh, the whoa. hell? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop! He would want that. I know he that would. Just, that's why I said it. <laughs> that just that that escalated from zero dogs. to one hundred real quick. Yeah, well, I mean, shit. Three top dogs. <laughs> top, top. Dogs. See now that entire sentence is gonna be that entire sentence is gonna be a <laughs> goat screech now. <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> so calling to all of our top dogs fan, you want some cool stuff? You can buy subscribing to our server subscription on Discord. Become a podcast supporter today. You get exclusive raw and uncut footage of your favorite podcast episodes, join supported meetups, and talk with other podcast supporters and the team. Plus, you get a custom-made paw emoji and other goodies that come with a $2.99 a month subscription. But wait, there's more! Upgrade to the Podcast Supporter Plus, and you get episode voting, supporter feedback, and a live audience for only $5.99 a month. Plus, get sneak peeks of upcoming ideas, merchandising, and more. You don't have to join any of these subscriptions, but it does help us out a lot. And thank you so much. Yay! Everything, everything is very much appreciated. But before we continue on, uh, we also have new Supporter Plus members, so I need Michael and Green to come here. Come here. Yeah, both come of here. you come here. 
Come here. I hear music. <laughs> my I mean, phone. Oh, music. Come here. Closer. Come oh, it's my phone, actually. Both of you, closer. Fuck? <laughs> come here. I'm gonna grab you. <laughs> oh, I oh got both with one arm. <laughs> you grab both of them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh. Alright, okay, I was stuck <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my God. These, these are my let me go. Oh god, what is happening? What is happening? Oh. <laughs> let me go. Whole thing now. This is what happens when oh. they find out they can grab each other. Okay. I'm supposed to be whitelisted. Hey! Hello. <laughs> thank you guys for a lot for your support. Oh. Thank, thank you, big pets. Big pets. Yes, thank you so much for the I'm support. I'm the one that's supposed to get the head pats fiction, but oh well, I'll give you this. Hey, one two bunnies and <laughs> two bunnies and one husky. What could go wrong? <laughs> this is not Bugs Bunny. Sour. I'm gonna refrain from commenting because you do it's gonna go us. horribly bad if I of say something. Of course, thank you. Guys. <laughs> I mean, I can comment. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> And to think, all of you guys out there, if you join our subscriber plus, you too could be getting head pets from Stream and Fiction. How about yeah. that? even Whiplash if he wants <laughs> I, to pet? I, give better, I, give I don't mind giving head pets. Though. Why? I mean, I'm still thing is, fiction, but he's learning quickly. I mean, I give good I, head pets. I will vouch for that. I mean, I, I give good I give head pets. The, me, all of us give the best head <laughs> pets <laughs> because you gotta. It's not just getting head pat. You need to get your fingers in the fur and kind of get little like scratches, and you gotta do that rolling scritches, motion scritches, with your fingers. Yeah, so it kind of rolls. It's like a, See, a rolling. Uh, it's this really. This money's very very happy. This money's yeah, also I give good very massages, very happy. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I give good. Yeah, I good. I give good internal massages as well. <laughs> you got if you yeah, same if you could, well, if about you could go on ahead and so we can continue on with the show <laughs> but before we, our our videographer dies in the background because I can hear him dying in the background right now. <laughs> the Lord in the back is like, <laughs> Boy, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, I've had no one complain about my internal massages. You're not helping this uh, conversation. <laughs> hey, this one's the one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring her into this. Wait. Mm -hmm. Um. 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 um, no, um. No, Sakura, don't encourage that behavior. Just pretend he said nothing, okay? It's okay. Just, just act like you don't know like what he's talking so about. So lewd. Oh just my like, god, disgusting. Just like a restaurant, uh, another satisfied customer. <laughs> I just like I was like, yeah. Oh, I did my job. That was I, that I, was a bad I, dad I, joke. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you have. No if you, idea how if you lovely much bunnies I'm would go back, back right to the now. back, I would uh, that would be much appreciated. So we can continue. Dream. <laughs> Thank All you right, for coming, though. <laughs> <laughs> lovely having you. Dream, mean, dream sure. mean you. Thank you me and you were just going to share dad jokes so much when we meet each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a dad joke oh, for you, got... Whiplash. Oh, God. I got what one. Is it? <laughs> Did you know that the first French fry was not made in France? It was cooked oh, in God, Greece. This one. Uh, I know that. Oh one. my god! <laughs> <You're> good. <laughs> You've been studying. Oh my god! Good. You're stepping your game, fiction. I'm proud of you. You are. I found that on a TikTok video. I can't say I took full oh, credit dude. for that. I just thought it was great. Hey, hey! You found the information. You found the joke. That's all that matters. Doesn't matter where it comes yeah. from. Yeah, you're just one step closer to getting your Corvette in a tucked-in jeans. <laughs> you're right in a Corvette. Floral shirt. I mean, I'm already there, so it's working. Is this the shifter? <laughs> oh, it's the wrong one. It's this one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's keep going. <laughs> so now that we have answered one question so far in all this, let's keep going. <laughs> yes, let's one. keep we going. Answered, we, was that only one we question? Kind of overspilled <laughs> on the, three. We kind of overspilled on a few questions. It doesn't necessarily... Okay, let me, let me clarify something with you, Sakura. It doesn't necessarily have to just be... We don't have to follow a script. It's just so that we keep on talking, and if we continue to keep on talking about it, it's good. We don't necessarily have to follow everything. That's just like yeah. if we need filter. Like, trust me, when we say this... I don't think we've ever done one, like, script that we have read up. I don't think we've ever done one script to, like, a, to a T. We have never I, answered every question on one. <laughs> we've always gone too did, far on like, one question. Eight, we did t one or two episodes. We did seven of the nine questions or eight of the nine questions. We were really close. 
That's the closest we've gotten. Otherwise, it's been like four or it's five. Not a, it's not a speed to how far we can get the document done, necessarily. But if I want... <laughs> no, to be fair, like, well, the way we do it, like, we have these questions so we can give out more information, but we get stuck on one question so much because we want to, like, talk about it because we have our own sides of it that... <laughs> that was broken. <laughs> Just set up on the ceiling. <laughs> I, you got that I, stuck I, in my so... ceiling. You, you got that stuck in there. You see what you stick there? <laughs> Fix that. I couldn't turn it off. <laughs> Mother <laughs> Get that off of my ceiling studio. <laughs> this is what we fucking deal with every day. How dare you? <laughs> We're all children. I'm no water. adults here. <laughs> this is <laughs> right here. Oh god. <laughs> All right, children. It was a mistake, and I get punished for it. Wow! <laughs> you purposely shot that rocket up into the ceiling. I told you to take it down. I did it on Not mistake. mistake. I, I, dude, I just uploaded my mistake. avatar with face tracking. <laughs> I had to sacrifice a few things, and I broke some of the animations. Okay, so give me a goddamn break, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but there you go. Instead of streaming, saying, he's gonna be our no janitor for the night. Anymore. We get oh, stuck boy. on one question and it gets through the entire like questions we have thought of. Like tonight, how many have we done so far? Two or three? Uh, two, <laughs> two or three. Or three probably. I like the last one though. We have like but, eight. Oh, but we're gonna probably do two more. And because I, <laughs> I guarantee we'll be saying our sides of the stories for quite okay. some time. But let me ask. Just so true. let me ask you this. So we'll get a little bit okay, more specific on this on question. Front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll ask you this. So. We are known, as most people like to say, pub well, at least publicly, that we are a very open community, and we don't really necessarily oh. judge. But Three I would say, oh my god, <laughs> oh, oh god, yeah. <laughs> you thought I said pups? I, I thought, thought you were what you were leading to. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, there's nothing wrong like with the pub community. The pub community. Well, no, 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 no. You were about to say pub, but you, you said, like, you, the way you said pub, and then you rephrased public. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with the pub community, but I just, I'm not one, so we're all not pups here. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, are you on, so, are you on fiction? Hmm. No. You're a puppy. Okay, no. back on track okay. now, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing focus here. Let's try to get back Always in our right game here. How how has Remember the furry like fandom Warren become Pindia. a how, how has the furry fandom become a source of support for its members? Now that we pointed out the negative things, let's put out the positive here. Uh, usually, most so, people in the fandom like to most people in the fandom. I mean, what everyone usually deals with is the same negativity from the outside of the world. So, but most people who are new to the fandom will always be welcomed in by people who are inside the fandom for being a furry because, you know, the people inside the fandoms know how it goes and they want to be as welcoming to the new people as much to show them that, look, what you like is who you are. And you're always welcome in this fandom, and you're always welcome to be a part of the fandom, have a good experience, and you don't have to worry about the negativity. They may exist outside the world. And you don't have to worry about anything. Okay, well, I'm not gonna say about the negative stuff we just said, but you don't have to worry about the negative stuff that happens in the fandom, and you're just welcome to be a furry, regardless. Mm. Some exceptions. Some exceptions. Yes. <laughs> but some exceptions I don't want to say, but they're like crude, rude mm -hmm. stuff, say least. Okay. Or disgusting. Pardon me. About you, stream. I'll... That's you were gonna talk. So, so I kind of lost a bit track of what was the question. I just want to make sure because I don't want to drift on something else. No, no, I'm I'm serious because okay, you say how does the community show being supportive to other members of the community, right? Is that what you said? Uh, I said, how has the furry fandom become a source of support for its members? So I've noticed that uh, when I posted. So I, I know a lot of... How do I explain this? So the furry community is very welcoming and it's also very encouraging. When I posted pictures of my German Shepherd puppy, Penis. like, you know, oh. just passing... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Passed away. <laughs> 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 
fucking hold the penis. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it can, be it can be wholesome in some way, and just not that wholesome. No, yeah. No, it's so <laughs> Hey God, we'll never get to get through this. This is horrible. <laughs> is this gonna be a two-parter, by the way? I'm gonna fall off my chair. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's not. One. It's, it's one not. part. Okay, I'll make it quick because obviously it's boring. Um, <laughs> so when I posted pictures of my German Thumper puppy, I posted it just to mention, like, just to say that I might be distant for a little while, and I was overwhelmed by the amount of support. And like, get better soon. Hope it goes all right. If you need anything, like my DMs were filled with messages, and I was like, "Wow, we have a really fantastic community." It can be really full of drama, but it can be very overwhelmingly positive and supportive. And for that, I'm really grateful to be in this community. The amount of feedback and support, uh, Kit. I'm pretty sure Kit could probably say something similar as well. Yeah, he's giving a thumbs up. Uh, Kit lost his husband uh, a few weeks ago, and I feel like he's gotten a lot of support, and he just told me yes, he did. So that's something really good about the furry community. We accept everyone, we support everyone, we try our best. We're not always able to do everything, but we make do with what we have. Absolutely. Also, my bad. I wasn't trying to be f funny. It just came no, out that fine. way. But I don't. I didn't take it but, personally. It's that delay sometimes. I but I, just fucks with but I understand. No, I know how it is going through like puppies lost. Like I'm. It's always rough dealing with a loss of someone that no, you. No, but loved, you don't understand. Or... You don't understand. He was seven months old. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I know. Oh, God. No, I was, but... I was bringing back the whole comparing self situation. Bad. I know, Bad. I, I, Bad. I, know, I know what you're doing. <laughs> but no, yeah, there, you're very true. That's very true. Like there are some people who have, like how Sakura was talking about people with life upbringings, how their family may not accept them for who they are if they're trans, bisexual, gay. And people might post that on Twitter and they have an overwhelming support from those people saying, hey, you're always welcomed here. If you need help, let me know all that sort of things, which is amazing to see from just strangers yes, talking to strangers. True. And it's amazing mm. to see that because let's be honest, there's truth behind that. I was brought up the same way, very Christian. I'm just very grateful my parents are... I honestly was scared of it for years when I first came out. And the fact that they're very welcoming and being bisexual is amazing. Because I never thought that in my entire life they would be accepting of me. But some people unluckily don't have accepting parents because they think if it's not your... If it's not my way, then it's the highway. And that's usually how it turns out with some people. And the furries you know, are welcoming of those people. If you need help. I find it weird that stranger will accept you better than your own family. This is mm -hmm. messed up. Because this they might have really went through that up. same situation. <clears throat> they might went through that same situation so they know the pains and the griefs of it. So they'll be more open to those people than their parents are. It is very messed up. That Here's my hot take on this. If you're religious, don't take this offensively. It's just what I see it is. But it's, to me... That someone lets a religion control how they should love their children. Someone that they gave birth to. Someone that they grew, made, they raised as their child. And then as soon as that child wants to be someone that you think is wrong in their eyes, and you don't want them anymore, that is completely despicable and disgusting, and you should lose any sort of abilities as a parent from that day on. Because if you don't love your child for what they want to do with themselves to be happy, then you don't need to be a parent. That's just how I see it as. Like, you should be happy for a child whatever they mm. want to do with themselves. Mm. That's just my take on That's it. That's a good point. We should not set a path for them. They should set their own path in life. Mm. Yeah, you just correct. You just set like a sort of a like open path for your child to go in the right direction instead of the wrong direction, which could deal with hard drugs, maybe gang life, maybe something that's dangerous and could get them killed. You set them on like a good path, get them going. If they want to be transgender, be gay, be bisexual, let them do it. As long as you know. Let's say they want to go to college. You want them to go to college? They go to college. Good. That's fine. If they want to go work, 
blue collar job if they want to do something that just makes them happy. Just let them do it. Mm-hmm. Just don't hate them because they want to be who they want to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I think that we're getting. Uh-huh. We're getting to I think the that end concludes. of the episode, actually. Yes, that concludes oh. today's episode, actually. Oh, but don't... Do you, you want to say something, yeah. Sakura? Do you, do you want Do you want to cook? I was going to say, uh, uh, I, I, I wanted to answer the question, too. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, like, you know, this is going to sound, like, really cliche and everything, but, like, you know, it is the fact that, you know, the furry fandom has saved me in a lot of different ways. You know, it was the accepting furries that, you know, helped me discover being transgender, helped me, you know, experiment with being transgender. It was, you know, furries who were there when I went through my divorce. You know, it was furries who were there when, you know, I lost a lot of my friends over a lot of the things that I've gone through in my entire life. And if not for the people, the accepting, open, kind-hearted people that I've had in my life, I don't know where I'd be right now. And so, you know, to that effect, you know, I am very grateful to the furry fandom for being there and showing the overwhelming support for being there to help me get through this and to help me, you know, find who I am and accept me for who I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. And I just want to say one more thing too. And so take this too hard, guys. Even though there are some negatives that exist in this fandom, I mean every fandom has one. There are more overwhelmingly positive sides to this fandom than there are negatives. It's just when the negative comes out, it's just it's just that one thing. And it'll disappear after a few days because that's usually how it goes. But there are much more overwhelmingly positive aspects to the furry venom than there are negatives by far. And very true. As I say, mm-hmm. every furry is welcomed, no matter what, no matter what you want to be. Any new furry is always welcome to the fandom, and we all absolutely give the most love to those people because we mm-hmm. understand what they may have went through. We understand how anything might affect them because there's someone in the fandom who's gone through the same exact thing that you've gone through and you can always find those people like twitter is definitely one of the best places or vr chat social media in general like like, some things can be said some things you know shouldn't be said but you always will find those people and that's when i feel like you guys will become good friends based off life happenings Remember okay. where you come from. That will guide you yeah. what you need to do. Exactly. Uh, all right. Thank you, Whiplash, for that information. That was actually very well thought. This time it wasn't Himbo Brain. Well, I'm oh not the best with voc- Look, I'm not the best <laughs> with vocabulary. To- that is Stream's thing. Stream's like vocabulary, like an open dictionary of like words I've never heard in my fucking life. <laughs> no, that's probably just me struggling to freaking translate everything in my brain because a lot of things, they come up in French and then I have to translate in English. I feel I struggle with vocabulary, actually. I struggle with vocabulary. I'm amazing at math, but when it comes to like English, I'm like... Same. Whoa, what? <laughs> What's <Yeah>. this word? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, guys, that concludes today's episode. Thank you for joining us in this week's episode of Top Dogs. We hope you enjoyed our journey into the furry fandom, and we, as we've discussed the common challenges and misconceptions that the furries face. As we wrap up, let us leave you with this. No matter what challenges you face... There's always a place of acceptance and understanding in the furry fandom. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode. Until next time on Top Dogs. See you later. Take care, guys. Have a good night. Have yourself a good night.